Welcome into the weekly round, November 5th, 2022, the year of our Lord. All right, day five of 11, walking into saluting veterans and appreciating veterans. We're moving into the midterms. We have the Marine Corps birthday. And best of all, we have Veterans Day. It's an amazing time of year. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. I don't care where you are. It is. It's an amazing and exciting time of year. So, news announcement. 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 Hot off the press. We are interviewing Joe Biden on Tuesday. We got the keys to the palace. It's going to be through Zoom. And we're going to... Myself and our guest tonight are going to be interviewing the president, asking him very important and integral questions that we can get, that the people and the voters truly want to know the answers. So make sure you're tuning in. Make sure you give us a, at least an ear to listen to because um, we're going to have lots of really great things to say and we're going to have a lot of really great things to ask Mr. President on Tuesday. With that said, we do have a Mr. Tyler Randall on tonight. Very charismatic, energetic, genuine guy. He's a he's a, a lot of fun to be around. He's got a lot of really great ideas. He's a Marine, Marine first. He spent some time as a rifle instructor. Amazing guy. Really, really amazing guy. And he has lots of stories, just like most Marines always have lots of really, really great stories. So um, we'll get his perspective of, of our interview with Joe Biden coming up here in a few days. We're going to get his perspective of the Marine Corps. We also just want to hear a few Marine Corps stories because they're always great to hear. Um, doesn't matter who you are, where you are. Everyone loves to hear a good Marine story. And we'll get his perspective on really what's going on with um, – really what's going on with the midterms and his perspective of the American flag and the national anthem. So with, uh, with all due respect, we're going to go to commercial and we're going to bring in Tyler. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you soon. Beijing has three goals working through the university system. The first is to influence the next generation of American leadership and how our rising crop of leaders perceives China. The second is to send Chinese students to American universities to acquire knowledge and skills, and then take that back to China. The third goal of Chinese operations on college campuses is intelligence, to collect sensitive information in research labs, especially at major research universities like Stanford and Harvard University. University presidents know this, and this is one reason why they're underreporting, misreporting, or keeping the names of foreign donors anonymous. They know what the Chinese are doing. They know why the Chinese give them so much money. They know their institutions are vulnerable to Chinese espionage. So why do they allow it? They're effectively inviting the Chinese to come in and steal American research. All right, there, Weekly Rounders. Thanks for tuning in. We got another show. We have day five of saluting veterans for 11 days into Veterans Day and the Marine Corps birthday, because that's really what Veterans Day is all about. All right, I have another guy I spent some good time with down in Texas, um, one, one, one absolute genuine guy. Um, he is a veteran, a Marine Corps veteran. Lots of great things to say. I can't say enough about him. Mr. Tyler Randall. Come on, man. Introduce hey. yourself. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Tyler Randall, and uh, as you can see in the little thing, I go by Reverend Sergeant Tyler Randall. I use both my titles for pomp and circumstance, and uh, I'm glad to be on. Thanks for having me, Mike. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. You're always a colorful individual, um, you know, in the, in the uh, Slumberjay oil days, you know, in uh, South Texas, and you're always, you're always fun to, to hang out with. So introduce yourself to the, to the weekly rounders, tell them, you know, your story, tell them your, your, some of your experiences in the Marine Corps, all the, uh, all the good, the good stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's all kind of fresh in my mind right now. I just had a buddy visiting from, uh, from Houston and uh, he was a, a helicopter pilot in the army and we both went to high school together and then he went to the army and I went to the Marine Corps. Um, see him a 1371 combat engineer, obviously, as you could see, engineers lead the way. 
<laughs> and uh, also a rifle and pistol instructor, 0931, even though I technically didn't rate the, uh, the BMOS until after I got out. And one was in the reserves after that for another four years or so with a two-year break in between. Uh, started the reserves when I was at Schlumberger, and uh, they didn't like that very much because they couldn't fire me legally. <laughs> <laughs> so I would be going, you know, we'd be uh, we'd be out there fracking and we'd be out there for, you know, six days at a time. But every month, like I swear, it always landed like I would have to go out for like one day, two days, drive back, then drive 400 miles from Corpus to Fort Worth to my drill unit. It was the closest engineer unit to me. And uh, I basically did it for free. The amount of money I made as a, you know, an E4 and an E5, uh, I, it was for free. I basically just paid for gas. Uh, the fun, one funny story is uh, I was an E4, got out, you know, thanks Obama. We, we get out and then I get called back in. Thanks again, Obama. Uh, get called back in for one year in the, in the IRR because they want, they want experienced guys that are deployed to teach the youngins, you know, in the reserve units, which is a good plan. In, in theory, except guys like me get there and they realize sometimes it's a shit show. Uh, it's not really up to standards up to, you know, they go, they give you what's called non-ob, non-obligated uh, service. So yeah. a lot of guys, like if they're getting anything for the VA, this w- when one case guys getting a, you know, he's getting a, what's it called? Disability through VA. They tell him, well, you can choose. You can either get your paycheck or you can get your VA paycheck. And they're, they're going to just pause payments and they'll pick back up as soon as you you know, exit the service again. And he's getting more money on disability than he was as like a staff sergeant. You know what I mean? Oh, I believe it. Fucking amazing. Or a sergeant, excuse me. But still, that's, I mean, so you get to a unit like that and uh, my my major, after going to the rifle range with him, uh, well, you know, I, I put in an extension to stay in for six more months just to stay around the guys, you know, because I loved it. And um, I was on the rifle range with my major. I was telling the story this morning. <laughs> And uh, my, my ACOG failed, like the internal, it just fucked up. And the other guy, another guy next to me, his, his rifle had a malfunction as well. His name is Reagan. Uh, he's like a Lance Corporal, I'm a sergeant, or excuse me, a, a corporal. And uh, we're sitting next to our, you know, commander. So we all three of us share a rifle and we all shoot expert. Nice. And, and then my major comes up to me a few weeks later. He's like, Hey, are you going to stay in? And I said, sir, I'm on my last like, two, you know, month of uh, extension. There's no way I couldn't even pick up sergeant if I wanted to. And he was like, all right, well, I'll see you next month for your last drill, right? I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And uh, my buddy Ty texted me. He's like, are you going to come to drill? And I was like, I don't know. It's a pretty long drive, one, one drill. And he goes, bro, you got, you got fucking selected for sergeant. I said, fuck you. No, I didn't. <laughs> and he, show, he showed me the MOL screenshot, you know, and I was like, well, I guess I'll fucking stay. And then they, they, ambushed, well. <laughs> they ambushed me with a reenlistment right afterwards. And I couldn't say no, dude, this is how they get you. It was, so it's family day. My wife is there. And they give first they give her a certificate of appreciation, you know, in front of the whole unit. And then I'm oh, like, yeah. you sly motherfuckers, they got me. <laughs> and you know what? It worked. And I loved it, even though oh, yeah. the green weenie, you know how it is. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. Old Semper Weenie, man. That's how that's how they get you every single time, man. They, but they, obviously, I'm still fucking motivated as shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always have been, man. You know what I love? You know, following you through all the years. Last time, you know, last time I ever talked, I, I talked to you face to face was, you know, maybe like 2011, maybe, you know, yeah. um, and uh, maybe even 2010. I don't remember anyway. So um, I, I always love following you, always, I, even on the social media stuff, because um, you always, always so rambunctious and always going after people. Um, oh, yeah. You know, always, with, with truth, though, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I, I, I I passively, you know, get into people when they're saying crazy things online. Um, but you know, and you just, you just go, you just go blunt force after people with, with, with a hammer and <laughs> just it's fun watching. You're on what your 15th, 16th <laughs> Facebook account. Uh, tech, I think fifth, uh, fifth or sixth. And then right. I think I'm on uh, my second or third Instagram and I'm on my um, sixth Twitter. I just got kicked off of Twitter uh, yesterday. Oh yeah. yeah Again, I saw that. I saw that. So, yeah. That was so good. Uh, and it was the moderator that, that permanently suspended me. Cause I told them they probably wouldn't have a job in 12 hours, but I'll be back on Twitter. So proving my point, they fucking suspended. Actually, I don't care. Cause if Elon does what he says he's going to do, I'm going to get my original one back, you know, all 200 of my followers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, it's it just absolutely bonkers, man. You know, like you can't say, if you say something ignorant, you, you, you can see these 
millionaires, you know, these, you know, Hollywood elites, they, they get on Twitter and they say whatever they want, absolute just dumpster fire stuff. And yeah. then sure enough, you say, well, you know, you're actually the dumpster fire. You, next time you fire your phone up, you're the one that's suspended. Like, wait yeah. a minute, let me check and see if they got any. I know they didn't. They're still, they're still sitting there singing whatever they want to. So, so you know what that blue check really does? That The blue check is actually like a, it's not just a status symbol, but it also like it, it puts them, it puts the people with the blue check in a different kind of uh, mode of Twitter. Like they can, they can put it to where only they see blue check uh, Twitters. So their sphere closes off. They don't see mentions from, you know, plebes like you or me. They only see, you know, LeBron James and all these other, uh, you know, activists and journalists and shit. So they keep, that's what, the, that's why the echo chamber is so echoey because yeah. they're only seeing other verifieds. They're not, and it, when they do deign to look down at the, you know, the unwashed and read their comments, they're, they're just like, delete these motherfuckers. And they do. Oh, you can see it, man. It's, it's, it's so, it's so obvious, you know, it's, it's absolutely bonkers, man. All right. So hit me with, uh, hit me with, you know, hit me with a good military story. And I'm going to hit you with one to, so you can think about it. We had a guy, we were in, um, we were in the, we were in the med. I think no, no, no. We were in the we we're in the Persian Gulf, and um, for some reason we were completely dark. So at night we couldn't have any normal lights. We had to have tactical lights. So uh, it, yeah, th we were in the Persian Gulf because this was when we were the officially the Harrier carrier in two thousand and three. We had twenty six Harriers on one um, on one LHD, and uh, you know so it's for people who don't know LHD is a short deck uh, aircraft carrier. Um, for helicopters and uh, amphibious uh, assault type vehicles Vertical and harriers oh yeah <clears throat> uh, and, and it was loaded to the bear with with harriers anyway so we were of course working on the jet at the very front of the of the carrier and then the tail was actually hanging off the front of the jet and mm -hmm. it was me uh, a real good friend of mine and our shop uh, our shop monkey and <laughs> our shop monkey was named Hinkle. I'll throw them out there. And um, so it's, it's at night. We can't have any lights outside of tactical lights, which are a tactical light is a blue or a red light. And if you ever use a blue and a red light in an, an area with zero lights, you it, they're worthless. You know, you yeah. might as well, you know, pull your pants down and use your moon. You know, there's, there's no light anyway. So moonbeam, <laughs> the old moonbeam, baby. <laughs> so you got that anyway. So, um, and we go we go and we finish the work and we pick up the, the toolbox and my buddy newton was rubbing against my arm and uh, we're walking down towards the shop our shops on the end on the on the aft of the ship and um like newton is hink on there he's like no is not on the side of you we turn around and all you see is the silhouette the black silhouette of hinkle walk off the front of the ship oh my god we're going like 60 knots through <laughs> through the through the sea and you know i was like like a 22 year old lance corporal maybe that's 21 i don't remember anyway so um we're, me and him were like oh my god we just lost he, he just walked off the ship like, oh my god we look over the end of the ship sure enough man hink was laying in the net like oh <laughs> the toolbox is on his chest we help them up, you know, like, and, and this is how word spreads through a, a ship. So that was at the beginning of the, of the shift. I go down for mid rats and the bearded lady in the chow hall, she's like, Hey, you're 223. You're, you're, you're that unit that the guy walked off the ship tonight. Like, oh my God. How do you know that? <laughs> it's like me and another guy. How does it, how did it get around to you in the chow hall? Oh man. But yeah. Uh, freaking military man you, you, the you, scuttlebutt bro the scuttlebutt the best, the best at doing the worst of the worst <laughs> so I, lo I love <laughs> I love being on ship that was so fun so it was. such a good time you know I did think of a good one I thought of a good one and honestly there's I have so many I think like you and I was talking to my buddy Adrian about writing a book and have like different sections of the book like where there be uh, like combat stories, admin stories, training stories, your greatest achievements, your greatest fuck ups, you know, things like that. Like you would have to put it out like that. Otherwise it's oh, just yeah. like a never ending stream of just the smoke pit fairy tales. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, smoke pit fairy tales. That's smoke pit fairy tales. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, Dude, that would be a good name for the book. Uh -huh. Hell yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but my favorite, one of my, I was telling it this morning once again, and I think this one com comes to me because 
it has like all the hallmarks, right, of a good military story. You know, there's a there's a, a protagonist, there's an antagonist, and you know, good triumphs over evil. So, at the time, I was uh, I had just picked up sergeant in the reserves, right? Because this is not too long after I got meritorious promoted. Uh, we were going to Belize for AT AT's annual training, right? So we're getting activated to go on active duty to go to Belize to build two schools uh, for deaf and blind kids, you know. But it's also a cover for, and I'm sure I could say this now because I don't give a fuck. But it's a, it was a cover for a, you know a joint operation for interdiction, right? So the Air Force, uh, I can't remember what their NCIS is called, but the Air Force's NCIS is down there with us. Um, they're going to be down there with us. They they put us up in the Radisson because uh, it's the most secure building in Belize City, and you know they're like you can't leave, you can't. If you have a blue passport, because uh, you got to stay on property and then we'll bus you to the work site and all that other stuff. Well, on the lead up to this, you know, you got to go and sign your orders to get on the plane. And some idiot in admin was like, you have to leave from your home of record. Well, my home of record's Corpus Christi. I drive up to Fort Worth to sign my orders. And I'm like, what time's the flight? Like, oh, the flight's at nine, but you have to leave at Corpus Christi at six. And I'm like, what? Why? Like, well, that's because that's the way it is. And I'm like, well, that's fucking stupid. And I, the whole time I've been trying to get a government travel charge card, can't get one, right? Because, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton's an idiot. She wanted everybody to have one, but you're not, but even if you rate one, and for some reason you could only get one if you remembered to use Chrome. This is like before there was a Chrome app, you know, you had to like go to www.chrome.com. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they, in Firefox, it didn't work. I don't know what, maybe it was like the uh, internal firewall or whatever. So this master sergeant was like, was like, listen, you know, you, you need to make shit happen. You're a sergeant. You know, I don't know why you can't get a government travel charge card. And I'm like, well, Master Sergeant, who has never deployed, even though you've been in for 20 years. <laughs> I, I don't know how guys. you got, I, I don't know how you guys. got to Master Sergeant. It was a female. And uh, she, she was just such a fucking, a total weight. You know what I mean? Just like a burden to the unit. Um, she's like, well, you need to make shit happen. I was like, bye, Master Sergeant. Like all sarcastic. <laughs> so I'm driving down and my wife is smart. She's like, hey, you should check in for your flight. So I go to check in for my flight and it's canceled. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I call the emergency travel number. You know what I mean? Like the Sato travel people. This corporal is in Boston in a bar. What runs outside and is like, hey, emergency travel, what's your problem? I was like, hey, my tickets got canceled. So she's like, let me get on my Blackberry. Hold on. So she's got like her phone like this. I could hear her clicking her Blackberry. She's like, oh yeah. Looks like you don't have a government travel charge card. And I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, well, about an hour ago, I was just told everything was still good. And, and by the way, this is the, the, the cherry on top. They said, oh, all you got to do is if, if your travel goes awry, show back up at the unit and we'll sort everything out. And maybe you'll do your AT here. So I don't know why they threw that out there. But now I see it's because they wanted to cancel my fucking flight. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I have one. Of course I have one. I guess <laughs> they, didn't count, they didn't count on me lying. Yeah, of course, <laughs> so said, of, course of course i have one yeah you want to read you the number she goes no it's cool i'll just green light your tickets because i'm leaving like immediately by the time she goes to work on monday i'm already gone oh yeah so i'm in belize like three four days and little do they know that their trap did not get sprung because now they think i'm just they think i'm awol so they're freaking ringing alarm bells up higher up higher up higher and then they never thought to just call the unit and say is, is randall with you yeah. <laughs> so one day i'm at a work site putting putting laying cinder block with the air force and the, and the army guys and a car pulls up they're like you need to come with us i get in the freaking in the jeep we drive up to the base 20 miles 20 miles away and there's a phone sitting on a desk and they're like someone's on the phone for you and the answer is that mass sergeant how in the hell did you get over there what the fuck we've been looking for you blah, 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 blah. and i was like like mass sergeant i'm a sergeant i just make shit happen and <laughs> just <like that>. silent <laughs> <laughs> silence and then i just was like okay and i hung up the phone so they didn't and when i oh got back they God. never brought it up you know why yeah. they didn't bring it up because then they would have had to answer for oh yeah why in the fuck were you surprised that he made it yeah seriously <laughs> like the the most resourceful people in the whole entire world are e3s to e6s in the united states marine corps like, amen we have zero anything we we have we're looked down upon to just to do it, you know, yeah. and <laughs> we just are the go-getters, you know, but like, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I, I think that's why we're the, we're the most successful in the whole. Zero fucks, zero, <laughs> zero accountability. <laughs> yep. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Ugh. And it's, it's all part of the, you know, shit rolls downhill. You know, if, if you do something and 
you know, you get hit with it, you can be like, I'm, I'm a sergeant, like, I don't care, <laughs> like, kind of like being a gunny, you know, like, like I'm a gunny, I don't, I don't care like, oh, <laughs> now you're a sergeant with duty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> holy smokes, that's awesome, that is so, that is, that is absolutely wonderful, man, so um, <laughs> we got the midterms coming up, man, I know you love, you love tearing into people uh, about political stuff, hit, hit me with, uh, with some political talk, we got some midterm, we got Beto, you know, trying to uh, take the helm in Texas. Uh, we got uh, we got old Federal woman um, over in Pennsylvania. Uh, he's he's, he's trailing by he's trailing by six points. He Beto is. is always irrelevant. That he just gets a bunch of money. It's more yeah, of a money. That's it. It's a money laundering opportunity for him. And uh, so Ted Cruz will remain, obviously. Um, the one that I'm really I really want to talk about is how to even today, two things. So hit one, and they're both related to Hillary Clinton because I don't know why she's still relevant. But they keep pushing her to the front of the line. Like she comes out today and, and saying that like uh, the Paul Pelosi attacker, whatever his name is, DePappy, that he's an um, ultra right wing MAGA extremist. Oh and I'm God. like, yeah. wasn't he like a homeless illegal alien who yes. was a hippie and fucking nudist? And what do they do in the house for 30 minutes before the cops got called? You know what I mean? So and, and I kind of I did I did I kind of did a show on this a few days ago. Um, so MS, uh, NBC came out and they ran a, a story for like six hours, which is and now deleted, so, which is now deleted. And uh, so the police came to the to the to the house. Paul Pelosi answered the door, let him in. You know, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, this guy is, uh, you know, we're having you know an argument, this and that. And it, for, you know, for a few hours, it was just it, it was very calm. And, and all of a sudden it just exploded into this mess that, that everyone's throwing in our direction, you know, and, you know, there's some of us that are like, well, hold on, like something, something's, something's not adding up. And, uh, on Twitter. So I had a buddy that committed suicide in, um, oh my God, it was in January of this year. Um, and I'm he, that, oh no, no, dude, it, it was, um, it was, it was a, a Marine, but he was, he was a hell of a kid though. Um, he was my student, just absolutely just great kid. I, anyway, I, I tell the story to say this, that, uh, he introduced me to a guy, um, that is now in the San Francisco PD. Right. Mm. And, um, I just BS with him through Facebook and, and, and all that. So, um, when the first Paul Pelosi incident happened, um, I text him like, Hey, like what's, what's really going on there? And oh, he's the like, DUI or what? the DUI, he's like, yeah. listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, don't spread it or, or whatever. And ironically, I'm on the show saying the story, but I don't, I really don't care. Um, I'm not naming any names, but uh, he's like, listen, what it was, was the guy was caught. He had a 13 year old boy in the car with him. And there, that's why the whole entire thing got, got, got shoveled oh so shit. oh yeah so crazy man absolutely crazy i was on twitter and i when it first happened i i put it out there like yeah you know well the dui was well, that's why this this whole mess is turning into you know a, a soup sandwich because of because of all this so um but anyway so i realized also really quick that i cussed a few times is that okay or are you gonna have to yeah. go through bleep if you have to go through and bleep, I'll police myself. But no, you're 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 all right. Um, I, I as long as we're not you know going going honest and just going crazy with it. We're, okay, we're, we're good. So, um, so the other the other Hillary Clinton thing, she came out and did a video. Who, by the way, who's producing these videos? Like she's staring into a camera and reading the teleprompter <laughs> and saying stuff. And I'm like, what? What do you? So she her big thing is you know well because as you know the big the buzzword you know democracy's on the ballot democracy's oh on the ballot democracy's on the ballot. And she says, did you know that if you don't vote the right way, it could be up to state legislatures to decide who the president is? <gasps> what? You mean like the 10th Amendment? Like yeah. the, <laughs> the, oh, You yeah. mean that the states might get to fucking have a say in it? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to try not to. But dude, it's so insane. By the way, that is your only form of redress. And this is why I always go ham on the 17th Amendment and why it's garbage and why it is actually antithetical to liberty. Um, by the way, just for anybody that's not fast enough to Google it, the 17th Amendment changed the way that our senators are voted in, right? So we have the, we have the House of Representatives, which is a popular vote because it's based on population. Then we have the Senate to represent the states 
voted in by the state legislatures, which the state legislatures are voted in by the people. So that gives a good uh, stopgap for what we have now, where it's basically a popularity contest. They're there for six years. They're not beholden to represent your state at all because they have no connection to your state whatsoever. Now, the reason that your state legislatures usually vote in the way of the demographics of the state is because they live with you. Their kids go to school, you go. Senators don't. They stay in D.C. They never talk to you until it's time to get reelected or unless they want money. So your state legislatures are should hold them accountable. And the only thing they said is like, you can you believe that the people don't get to vote for it? It's like we do via our state legislatures. And when you have that, you have an you have your accountability here at the state house, and then you have your accountability up in Washington. All that is held in by the same vote. Also, the only other way to redress the uh, which is in the First Amendment to redress the government for grievances is by what Article Five. Article five is the convention of states, which by the way, is the is not meant to be the back door that it is seen. It's meant to be the, the way. Because yeah, they yeah. thought that, they, uh, the founding fathers thought that we would stay literate, up to date and accountable for what's going on in our country and then have conventions all the time, right? Which we don't. So now oh, yeah. it's, the, it's this back door, like libertarian pipe dream. And it's, it, we're getting close to having the amount, the right amount of uh, uh, state legislatures to do it, to actually have one. But the the only thing is just having it itself is a victory, but it shouldn't be. And because they can only vote about what's on the docket. And the only thing that's currently on the docket that, uh, that they have now is to limit the, the, to strike things from the federal government. I think they should put the 17th amendment on the chopping block. I think they should put a budget t- and on top of that, put a 28th amendment in there that you have to have a budget and if there is no budget, there is no government, shut it down. And then they'll have to rein in all the spending in order to make the budget. And then you can turn the government back on. That way we keep people from sucking the money out of our government. And mostly it's the staffers. It's the, mm-hmm. st- you know how many, you know how many staffers the average like Senator has? It used, it used to be like Too two, they, they have like 300. Yeah. It is, and those are the people that never leave. So those are the tastemakers. Those are the kingmakers. They're the ones that are constantly wormwooding and whispering in the ears of so-called Republicans like Mitch McConnell and be like, no, just take the money. It's totally mm-hmm. fine. Ah. Sorry. I He's don't such a weasel. He is such a weasel, man. So this is what we're going to do because I we need uh, capital N double E D to have more in-depth conversation about this on, on this show. So um, oh, yeah. uh, next weekend, Next Sunday, and I'm, I'm doing a scheduling thing here, so I'm okay. sorry to inter- interrupt the show. But uh, anyway, I'm going to reach out to you again. We're going to have you on the show, and that's all we're going to talk about the whole entire show is, is stuff mm-hmm. that we that we should be bringing up. So, uh, I like but, it. But just uh, pencil me in on uh, on 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 that. So, um, but it's true, man. It's 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 a absolute cluster bomb. And I've had some individuals the last few days, and I completely agree with them. And they say the same exact thing that you're saying that. Mo- less big government more government on the local level more government where you know we have actual people that want you know to adjust and make things better for their children and um and and for the people around them on close by and less pumping large amounts of money into these pockets of people like aoc mitch mcconnell you know crenshaw and, and, and just oh all these, God. all these people, and and they're like, okay, yep, forty billion dollars, Ukraine, like, oh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 time out, time out, can, can we get five a minutes ago? Like, can you can you remember all somewhere? Do you remember all the way back to one of the impeachments that where Ukraine was an enemy? Uh huh. Oh, oh, oh my God. When uh, when Hunter was working for Burisma, uh, uh, hey, oh, we, we need to work with Ukraine, and then all of a sudden Donald Trump calls calls the Ukrainian president and then they're the enemy. Oh, he's colluding with this foreign power who just so happens to have like, you know, a nonchalant relationship with, you know, neo-Nazi ideology. That's kind of pervasive throughout the entire government. But now they're the good guys because Russia bad. Also, I'm just going to put this thought in your head and this is not a conspiracy theory. It's just a wild thought. Maybe one of the biggest problems with Russia is not necessarily the leadership and Vladimir Putin because, you know, there's bad people in government everywhere. Maybe it's the fact that they are one of the largest remaining Christian countries. I don't know. That's just my thought. 
and we have to drag that down wherever it is. I know it opens up a pan of worms. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it. it's, it's, it's a direction that, man, I'm, I don't know if I have enough time to talk about. Not but, at all. Uh, no, I get it. Like, and, and what I like to stick with the show is really stuff that I can prove, not right. stuff that I think. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Because honestly, if I, if I talked about stuff that I think, Oh my God. I, every, every show I'd walk in with a tinfoil hat and I'm just uh, planting seeds, bro. I'm just planting seeds. I'd have zero (laughs) subscribers and and I I won't be able to, all my sponsors would pull out. That's why I gave the caveat. I gave the caveat. This is just something that I thought of, you know, whatever. Oh, no way, man. Uh, Totally. I, I, when it, it, what's the saying, you know, don't ever take a piece of shit, paint it green and call it a cucumber. Cause at the end of the day, you just got a piece of shit, you know, and it's, it's the truth, man. The whole Ukraine thing, you know, you want to, I, I feel for the people, right? The, the, nobody should be going to sleep, you know, in, in a hole. Nobody should go right. to sleep hungry, especially children. And everyone should have the right to, to just life, right? And, and, and feel safe. Dramatic pause for effect. That whole entire country has been, has, has been a money, money funneling machine for the last 25 years. And all of a oh, sudden... Yeah it's it's well you know what and 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 putin has even said and you know i'm not i'm not on russia's side i completely am against russia always have been i'm so you know don't all the the individuals that like to get on and and say mike you're nuts i am nuts but for different reasons um russia (laughs) even has come out and said you know putin has even come out and said like listen this battle it, it, like it, it's something that we're taking care of and the, the, you know, the West shouldn't be even involved in like, this is between us, you know, it's just get, get out. Like this is, this is between us. And Case in like, point, they had, they had peace on the table in yeah, April and exactly. they sent Boris Johnson to blow them, to blow it up because it's not in the best interest of the cause de celeb of money laundering in Ukraine, which they all wanted in on. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and Putin even said, you know, that, this is the West, you know, being dramatic and being dramatic for a reason. And, and that's what you should be focused on. Um, and, you know, it's 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 scary. Time. And I don't know. Did you see that article came out a few weeks ago in Newsmax? And I forgot to send you the link to, to if so, if you didn't, it, it's no big mm-hmm. deal. Did you, did you read that article? I didn't know. All right. So uh, what Newsmax is saying that um, basically the United States has let the West Coast um, kind of crumble in absolute shambles and they're doing it for a reason because the chinese is, is infiltrated um infiltrated oh, yeah. the, the government and like the long beach port they own a bunch of it and stuff yeah, yeah. and and that it's basically the, it's basically going to be the um how china is going to invade the united states and you read it and me i am not a smart person but dramatic pause for effect i am a common sense person and i am all about putting puzzles together and mm-hmm. it, it's, you know, we're given all the pieces here and we're looking at, we're, we, we got all the, all the edge pieces done and we're looking at it like, you know, so, something, I'm looking at this thing and just something's not adding up. And, um, and that, that makes complete sense, you know, but once again, I don't like to get into what I think. No, we that's, I mean, what we if do. you want to look at, if you want to look at puzzle pieces there, it, it, it's, it might not look like China, but it's definitely a China shaped hole in the middle after the edges are done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. Like, that's it. So like, look what they're doing in Africa and how they're, they're basically colonizing uh, Africa and Brazil. And, and if you look at what they're doing with, with the BRICS program, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, and South Africa, they're trying to create their own monetary global monetary system that is going to replace the petrodollar. So Mm -hmm. the, there are so many things happening at all at once and so many competing interests that it's hard to like zero in on one thing. Cause every time you start going down a trail, like, Hey, this trail connects to another trail, but that, then I got to go back and like yeah. walk down that trail and you go, Oh, whoa, whoa. They, they also intersect down there. And there's one that goes that way. So once you start seeing all these things, I, I mean, if you want to talk about elections and try to tie it back to that, like looking at two elections specifically, let's put it this way. So British prime minister, British prime minister gets elected. Okay. Then she immediately steps down and an unelected person gets just randomly named. There's no referendum. That's the, that's the pattern going forward. You look at why are they pushing Fetterman so hard in Pennsylvania? That's the plan. The plan is to get a vegetable elected. And then for, oh, health reasons, he has to step down in an unelected, you know, un, uh, somebody that would never, ever make it on a ticket. They would never survive a primary will be installed. 
And that's how you're going to see your elections going forward. You're going to see people like AOC get fucking ousted because, hey, if you're not going along playing ball enough, we're going to we're going to find a scandal. We're going to scandalize you. But don't be surprised. It starts happening to Democrats. Start scandalizing them and, in, and installing the people that will that will just rubber stamp. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Oh, I, I, I completely agree with, with AOC. It's it, with AOC. It's still a point where I. I, I know she's a very smart young lady, you know, because the stuff that she strings together. She's a ruthless she, politician, I would say. <laughs> she, she is, I, I'm, I'm certain that she is a GOP operative because she just says some of the wackiest things. And it's to the point where that's, I know that's what her. young people believe. That's what young people believe. People who went to private prep schools in, in upstate New York, outside of New York City, that's what they believe. So these people, they spend their entire lives in these private schools, Catholic schools, believe it or not, and they'll, then they go to university and then they, they're just told the same thing and that their worldview is kind of shaped. And then they go, so the, 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 the next lie is, oh, don't worry, conservatives tell ourselves, don't worry, when they get in the real world, it's going to hit them like a ton of bricks, except there are so many of them out there now that you can't expect the real world to hit them like a ton of bricks because they've taken the reins over every single institution that we have. So when she starts saying stuff and people on the news don't go, are you, are you dumb? Are you a dumb, dumb? Are you a dumb, dumb person? No, they go, oh, co- oh yeah, exactly. Oh, marginalized communities and diversity and whatnot. It's like, bro, if you knew what you were talking about, I mean, if you ever, I'm not going to get into James Lindsay because that's long-winded, but if you listen to anything he says, if you look into who, who Apollo Fieri is and what he did to schools, if you look into uh, Herbert Marcuse and what he did for what the modern left's position on things is, it creates dumb people who believe in platitudes but don't understand that it's a Trojan horse for the thing that they have no idea. They're, they're the ones pulling the Trojan horse, that's, being like, yeah, it's diversity. Said. It's diversity, bro. Said. And what's inside said. diversity is tyranny. That's what it is. Perfectly said. Holy smokes. That, that's, that's perfectly said. I, I forgot really how smart you are, dude. <laughs> you're, you're, no, not really. I just you're, 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 pretty, you're pretty sharp. Um, I, 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 I agree with you, man. I agree. Have you seen the Daily Wire, the, um, how China infiltrated uh, the United States and our institutions? No, I haven't watched it yet, but it's oh, on the list. Dude. Oh, my gosh. It's, it, it's like six episodes, six like episodes. 40 minutes long. Each oh, yeah. Episode. They keep them nice and short. Oh, my gosh. Great. Perfectly constructed and, and shot and and documented and do you see uh candace owens the uh george floyd i did yeah well that was eye-opening <laughs> well a me. lot of people weren't, was... a lot of people weren't paying attention to all the stuff that you know the, us conspiracy theorists were, were watching and saying hey his knee's not really actually on his neck and yeah. it, there's not a single person and i said it on my last podcast with my buddy adrian i'm like if you think that he didn't die of a drug overdose you're a big dumb dumb idiot and i said the the mean r word and I said, then you deserve to be mocked because there is no absolute biological way that a person with no injuries whatsoever can die. And the only, the only physical injury that he sustained was a broken rib from CPR when they tried to revive him. Yep. There's no particular hemorrhaging in his eyes. There was no bruising around it, his neck or shoulders. Like it is impossible for a, for a man to suffocate the way that he did. The only way that that happens is through an, an immense drug overdose. Absolutely. What I, what I loved about Candace's documentary was how she portrayed the good parts of George or George Floyd, you know, um, it was, yeah, it's, a, it's uh, called steel manning. You're, st- you're making the, the best you're giving, you're putting them in the best possible light so that, that when you destroy them, it makes it even more. It, it was, it, she, they did it. They did an amazing job. The daily wire did flat out. They, they, they did an amazing job. So um, we got about, uh, got about a minute, but I have so much that I really want to get into get, get in and, and, and talk about and kind of dissect. So um, have to have me back on then. Every everybody, just kind of hold your horses. Uh, we're gonna cut to a commercial break here, real quick. Um, we're gonna get some commercial, get get all the commercial stuff in. Uh, then we'll bring Randall back, um, and then we'll we'll shut it down for uh, for the day, and, uh, and we'll get moving. So um, appreciate everyone once again for coming in, showing us what's good. Randall, I'll have you back in. Just uh, hold on. All right. All right. We're gonna go commercial. If you are watching this, you statistically fall into three different categories. Number one, you need a second or third income for your household. Number two, current politics scares the absolute bejesus out of you. Or number three, you know there's money in tech and you want in, but you just don't know how. Okay, 
So currently there's hundreds of millions of dollars just sitting in a pot, just waiting to be monetized on platforms like YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And you're behind the curve if you're not just poking at the crumbs that are coming down at 1,000, 2,000, even $5,000 a month just in posting and talking about stuff that you enjoy in your spare time. You're absolutely crazy if you're not at least trying to get some of the money just to talk about things that you're passionate about. Set up a time and a day right now to come talk to one of our specialists and we'll be able to walk you through some of the options available to help you get monetized and build a platform. Find out how at www.carbonmelon.com. That is www.carbonmelon.com. Exactly how it sounds. C-A-R-B-O-N-M-E-L-O-N.com. Come, click on the link, join us today, and make an appointment. We look forward to seeing you. All right, weekly rounders. I tell you what, that first uh, that first half was was pretty darn good. We have a Mr. Tyler Randall. Tyler, say hi to everybody. Hi to everybody. This is kind of like being on Johnny Carson's couch, getting invited over, you know, for the second <laughs> segment. Oh man, I, I I hope that we can uh, we can populate our pockets as well as johnny carson did so <laughs> oh yes of course oh, tell, me something, tell me something about yourself How you, how you like? <laughs> I, I, I would be more i would want to be more in the leno kind of area but i don't know i guess oh, it's funny. Yeah, do it, do it again. <laughs> no, it does, whatever. oh i love leno that guy was awesome uh speaking of so you know it's funny because um oprah loved emmett oz right oh yeah loved him to death Brought him up, you know, brought him up, said so many great things about him, said that he was like almost like her son, you know, and launched his whole career. Not what, six, seven, eight years later, he's an absolute dumpster fire and she's going for the uh, the Shrek of all Senate candidates. Yeah, he's persona, non, he's persona non grata now because uh, he stepped outside of the leftosphere. Uh, honestly, it, on, uh, personally, I think he should have lost his primary because I don't think he is a conservative Republican. I, I honestly think he's like more left and center. Uh, but just he he took a page out of Trump's playbook where he would like he was like, well, if I just put an R behind my name, you know, people will vote for me. And honestly, he didn't get a lot like as much love as he thought he, it was a hard fought primary. Oh yeah. Now now it, he he's not having as much trouble with a uh, a mentally impaired uh, potato. But, you know, it, it's close. And he is he's up by six points only after the debate because uh, good night, everybody is like, OK, yeah, it's, he's clearly because people like you and me, we watch all the stuff. Right. We look at all the things we're reading, all the periodicals we're we're, we're on. We're going to content creators uh, that are not in the mainstream and seeing seeing all of these things happen and going, wow, it would be crazy if they actually debated, because if they'd have to put it on NBC and they did like dumb dumbs. Like, like I said on the last segment, for those of you that are only watching this segment, which I don't know why you would, why'd you click off the video? That's not the point. <laughs> the point is Fetterman is there only as a placeholder for the next person to get installed who would have never won a primary and who would have never gotten elected. So that's what we really need to look forward to and say, okay, Oz, if we put you, Dr. Oz, if we put, if us Republicans put you in into the Senate, you need to not be a rubber stamp of what Michael Knowles calls uh, a court jester for the left. Yep. You're not, you're not going to stand and get in line with Mitch McConnell. You need to be like Marjorie Taylor Greene. You need to be like, look what they did to a uh, old boy from North Carolina. What's his name? Uh, old uh, Crip Walk. What's his name? Pudge. Uh, 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 oh my gosh. I can't remember his name right now. It'll come to me when I don't even know it. The, the guy in the wheelchair. Um, um, not the... Uh... <laughs> Holy smokes. Bless you. Oh, worst time to Bless you. Uh, yeah. Well, um... that, was, that was a good way to bring the show to a screeching halt. I can't remember somebody's <laughs> name. But otherwise, but you know what I'm saying? They, they'll, do anything, and they'll do anything they can to like to, to put anybody that's against the GOP establishment, which is basically just an arm of, you know, the Democratic Party. Oh, it is. If you're it not is. a Lauren, Lauren Boebert and if you're not, you know, to an extent, Ted Cruz, he's he's backed off on a lot of because I think Ted Cruz has uh, I think he's got something else, you know, in cooking. his sights. Uh, he's got something cooking where he's not being as fervent as he should be or has as he has been in the past. I think he's got another presidential run in him. I think he's weighing his options. 
I think I think if anything, he wants to be on the ticket with DeSantis. So because if you get Texas and Florida on one ticket, you know what I mean? That's going to be a really big deal. Oh, but yeah. he also knows that if he if he runs against Trump, he'll lose again, yeah. um, even though. And by the way, talk about a guy. And I, I know this is the way I ramble and I just kind of go from subject to subject. But talk it. about a guy who, who was just on like uh, Prager University. Uh, having like they were like mocking the leftists that come to knock on your door in Texas to vote for Beto and he's like no I got I'm sorry I'm, I, I got stuff to do and he drops a book and it's like the, a bunch of zodiac symbols <laughs> so he's at least like taking Trump's criticisms and joking about them yeah I definitely. think if anything if anything that's like that's where I think he's headed right we just need to be focused on and especially in this primaries it uh, uh, not in the primary excuse me in the uh, the midterms is is the red wave I know everybody likes to talk waves red wave blue wave all that stuff. We need to take as many seats as possible, God forbid, so that we could get somebody in the president, in the executive. Yes. That's, uh, that's really what it boils down to. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> we're oil guys, right? Or we, we, you know, so when I was in Slummer J, short story, you know, I, I've, I've talked about it a little bit. So when I was at Slummer J, I got poached by BP, uh, mm -hmm. Lewis Energy down in, uh, down there in Laredo. It was in, uh, oh my gosh, I forget the name of the town for some reason. Uh, out near Catula. Anyway, Cthulhu, so yeah. um, got got poached by Lewis, and I was I was a, a company man, and on site one day, and the production manager comes in, and and he's just BSing with us, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, this lease did one and a half million dollars in oil yesterday, just in oil, not one water, day. gas, dry gas, wet gas. It just did in oil." And I was like, oh, "You gotta be kidding me." why am I doing this for this guy? You know? So me and another guy, I, I don't know if you remember Jeff Sarasano, you remember him? Mm, no. Nah, he was a, he, he was an interesting character. I'm not going to say anything bad about him, but I have lots of bad things to say. But I will. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, we ended up, we got five oil wells down there and man, we were, we, we were doing pretty good at first and uh, make a long story short. Um, so I know, I know I, I've, I've negotiated an oil contract to the point I don't know a lot, but I know enough to be dangerous. And a guy like you knows exactly what that means, right? Yeah, I just, so, so when I see um, all the BS uh, with, with, uh, with the oil and, and gas prices and supply and demand, I know I can tell what is absolute bullshit because I've, I've lived it. So in December of 2020, and um, I've said this a lot. So um, the, they knew that the new administration was coming in and mm -hmm. the EEA officials were reaching out to refineries and they were saying, all right, okay, all tier one to tier three oil refineries, uh, you're, you're not accepting, or uh, just refineries, you're not accepting any contracts for tier one to tier three. So a tier or one else. Or it, else. It is really what it kind of boiled down to, you know? Um, and you know, a tier one was a guy like me that was producing, you know, a, a truckload a month, right? A tier mm -hmm. three was like, you know, uh, a mid-level guy, right? About a hundred thousand barrels a month. Um, anyway, so immediately, you know, we were losing about 20% of our production immediately, you know, as uh, when, when, and the oil contracts obviously run one to 180 days, you know, yeah. whatever you can produce. So, as of the mid year of, as of June, 2021, there was all that, it, it finally bottlenecked and we're like, and that's why we saw the slow upcline and mid year it went Because up. who's, who's going to sign a new contract knowing that they're only going to be able to do, you know, 75%, 60% and, and lowering every other, every other cycle, every other contract, you're going to lose money. You can't exactly. pay workers. You're, yep. you're, you're, you're going to, and you're, by the way, with inflation and taxes, you're losing even more money. And so, just remember in the oil field, right? In the oil yeah. field, when oil's hot, everyone's getting paid. Capital P A I D, paid, mm -hmm. paid, paid. Remember those days that we would go out on site and guys would make, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars a day, right? Yeah. It, it, so, um, and it, it's the same. It's even better as you could probably get because I know you're a lot smarter than I am. It's even no. better instead of it being on the service side 
on the actual operator side, right? Because <laughs> you you don't have to pay anything. You're you're not you're not paying. You know, you're not getting the the crumbs. You, you know, you're getting the tank, right? Anyway, right. my my point is the that, crumbs are still good at that point, though. Like <laughs> it's the truth, man. Getting so, five hundred dollars a stage is fucking pretty good. Oh <laughs> well, yeah. So um, well, I got my first oil well, and um, I had a guy come out to get the the pump running and get everything going. He he walks out and he's like, "Yep, it's gonna be about twelve and a half thousand dollars get the oil, get, get everything running, and get you get oil out of the ground again." And once again, a a marine, a marine sergeant, like, mm. "All right, <laughs> let's do this. All right, let's do this. Challenge accepted." $194. I will never forget $194. Had the pump going. I, I took a picture of the pump and uh, texted to the guy who wasn't getting off the lease yet. And I'm like, hey, 194 bucks. <laughs> I got it going. And like, you know, holy smokes, you know. And um, anyway, my point once again. Well, that's um, so, how that guy makes money. You know what I mean? That's how exactly, that guy makes money. It's exactly. And, and he, he he's like, okay, you know, this, this guy that, you know, doesn't know much, uh, you know, from, from a certain platform, not on the operator platform, I'm going to, I'm going to take this guy for what he's worth. What a anyway, so, um, uh, back to, you know, mid 2021, how we saw the huge spike because the bottleneck finally hit. Right. And this is when, um, when the government, the, the current administration, and once again, I can't say it enough. I'm rooting for Biden, right? Because if Biden absolutely falls on his face, who, who, who loses? It's me and you. It's my children. 100%. It's your children, your wife, your family. We're the ones that are losing, you know? So I'm rooting for him. Do I want, you know, did I want it to happen? No, but I'm rooting for him, right? I'm just putting it out there because I'm not an anti, anti, pro, blah, blah, blah. I'm just, I'm a pro-American, right? Anyway, so um, where we are right now, realistically, to all the people that don't quite, that, that <laughs> side note. So I'm in a conversation with a guy the other day, mm -hmm. a real good friend of mine. I've, I've had him on the show a bunch. And he, uh, we're, we're on Facebook and he, you know, he's in a, he's in a discussion with a guy that, thinks he knows everything and the guy like he i forget what the comment was it was about oil and i said you know i, I gave the logical oil person answer and uh, the guy in reply to me said well i googled it and what you said <laughs> doesn't make sense i i about hit the roof like googled it you googled it are you <laughs> <laughs> what are you 12 like are you, you're telling me that in 2020 you were googling is covid bad like what, what oh are you doing God. you can't say i googled it is and the vaccine go, safe <laughs> like oh, let me see the first 20 comments say yeah so hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh and i was like I, I think my final comment, I just killed him with comments and he just stopped talking to me. I was like, have you, so I'm going to go to my accountant and say, you know what? You don't do, you're, I don't think you're doing that form correctly. I think you're filling that. I think you're filling that one form out incorrectly. I think you're doing that. Would I do that? No. Why? Because I'm not an accountant. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So TurboTax why? told me that you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Seriously. If you think about, think about that statement, TurboTax told me that my accountant's doing it wrong. Why would they do that? Almost be, it's almost like they want your business. So I wouldn't argue with my accountant because I don't know what in the Jesus of world I'm talking about. So when I'm coming to you and I'm saying, hey, this is wrong because of this, don't take it as I'm being an, an asshole. I'm being straightforward with you because I'm in right. the industry. And I, I just, I know enough to be dangerous. I don't know everything because nobody does. Um, but except our press secretary, of course. Um, but you know, I I just know enough to be dangerous. So just I'm I'm, I'm just I'm putting it out there. Anyway, I think I've been out of the game for a minute. But uh, another thing that I'll point out is uh, I don't think we've had a refinery built in this country in how many years? How many so years? I and I. So Three Rivers was ripped down and rebuilt. Um, we've had. Uh, it, oh, really? Corpus Christi. Yeah, it, it was. Um, uh, Corpus Sitco, Christi. Sitco was expanding in Corpus. I remember. Expanded. Um, we have Calume. Calume has built three refineries um, in, the, in the last 10 years. Um, oh, really? One in uh, Utah, one in Colorado, and one in, I want to say, Iowa. Um, and the oh, only oh. reason I know that, um, whenever I lived in San Antonio, my next door neighbor was 
um, my company's chemical engineer. And uh, he did, he was like the liaison between all of our oil contracts. And he taught me just so much about, about the whole industry. Anyway, I, this isn't an oil show. I don't want it to be about an That's oil fine. show. So, um, so one, I stand corrected. And two, like, well, I'm not going to ask that question if you don't want to go down the oil rabbit hole, but like, okay, so we, we have built a few in the last 10 years, but so, uh, so what the, the problem is, it's not that there's not supply and it's not that there's no demand. It's that they're being told, we don't want to go in this direction and we don't have faith in it because we want green. Exactly. The, the problem is when you tell that to them, what do you think they're going to do? Uh, they're going to snap their heels and say, Yavol, we will uh, produce when you tell us to during the midterms so you'll get reelected. Mm -hmm. No, they're going to say, F you, we're going to just trickle it out, cut our losses, try not to fire as many people as possible, because God forbid they have to lay people off at a, at a refinery. You know how hard it is to get those jobs anyway. Mm -hmm. My God, like I had buddies that waited in line for years and they would work on like the turnaround crews and just try to like make friends so that they could get hired on as like a welder's apprentice or a pipe fitter or something oh, yeah. just so they could have a, a good job. So when we see those jobs go away, do you think those, do you think all the refinery guys are going to feel good after they've been in the unemployment line for a while? You think they're going to feel good going back out with their hat in hand and then possibly having to take a lower pay even after inflation. So it's like a double, it's like a double kick in the nuts. Mm -hmm. No, they're not. And where are they going to go anywhere else into trucking? I mean, that's another thing when you talk about, so industry-wise, economy-wise, you want to talk about cheap labor coming in and stealing people's jobs. That's, I mean, that's exactly what the Southern border is doing. They're oh, yeah. flooding the market with cheap labor and it takes over the industries that you don't really think of, like truck driving, for that, not just in the oil field, but everywhere. Ha go to a love sometime and try to count how many Somalis and Indians and Senegalese there are. It's insane. I've seen people walk in the bathroom with bare feet. Well, you yep. see excrement everywhere. They get Your truck stops are getting destroyed by these by these people who are, if, you know, they kind of come across the border illegally, I'm sure they're, they're just economic migrants. They're mm -hmm. trying to make good with their, for their families. The problem is it's making bad for our families because mm -hmm. they, they're getting into more accidents. You're seeing more fatalities. You're seeing more hazmat incidents, which only bolsters the claims of the climate change people. Like, oh, look, look how bad uh, truck, uh, uh, look how bad pipelines are. Look at all the accidents on the roads. We need to get electric trucks to, to move our oil. It's yeah, like, are, right. are, are, are you not going to happen? <laughs> I'm about to throw my, I'm about to flip my desk over, but it's just so bad. It's like the death, the death of the American dream came. It, it, cro it crosses the border one person at a time mm -hmm. because you can't get a starting job at a trucking company and work your way up because, you know, Mahatma is going to do it at a, a half the price. Oh yeah, And you're, you're never going to, and, they, and they're, the trucking companies are, are saying, well, we'll, we'll take the loss because there's six, there's six more of his cousins waiting to come in mm -hmm. as we speak. Now, so you have that aspect to it. Then you have the, the oil industry aspect to it where they're just, just going to try to not fire as many people as possible, but they will. So then what's the, other, what's the other portion of this? So heating, right? Talk about heating oil up north. These people are going to run out of oil. It's, so heating is like $7 a gallon for kerosene. Who uses kerosene? Poor people, right? Yeah, oh yeah, it, it's, it's, it's up here. So like now crazy, we're going to tell like people, gangbusters. maybe you should light fires. What's worse for the environment? Yeah. Lighting <laughs> fires. <laughs> Holy crap. And then you're going to see, you're going to see people's houses burn down. You're going to see them die of carbon, carbon dioxide because they're not going to open the flu. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, a lot of this is dumb people being dumb. And you saw this um, in Texas when they had the freeze, people were turning on their barbecues inside their houses. Cause they're mm -hmm. absolutely mentally insane. <laughs> yeah. So yes, people are dumb, but at the same time, we can't just throw them the baby out with the bathwater. That's my view. So all of these economic things that are happening that weren't happening in 2020, even in the lockdowns, why are we going down this direction? We're being dragged, kicking and screaming in this direction. Yep. That's why the midterms are so, I mean, if anybody watches this and has heard me rant for the last three, four minutes, I'm so sorry. I apologize. First of all, second of all, vote Republican. If you have ever, if you're a Democrat, what this one time, just click red all the way down the middle and you will be setting yourselves up for an economic boom. You'll be setting yourselves up for a comeback like you've never seen. I promise you. I swear. I know they're not all the Republicans aren't good. The problem is every, every Democrat is bad. And I know oh, they yeah. say the exact opposite, except we got receipts and we've got facts to prove it. The, the White House just had to delete one of their tweets, tweets yeah. when they said <laughs> social security one. payments are <laughs> social security payments are at an all-time high. Oh my god, and then it, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh. Two paragraphs down because of inflation. Because oh. I think it was what was it? It was it Nixon, 
when Nixon, who signed it into law, said, well, we're just going to automatically adjust everything every time it, there's it inflation. It wasn't Nixon. It was, it was Carter. Carter. And because okay. of the last time it happened was because of Carter. And, and, and people just don't understand. And we had a, you know? had a fuel shortage. Did we have a fuel shortage then, too? Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Holy did. shit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It, it, it's, it's an absolute mess, man. So, you know what? We can BS and we can talk it all day long. It, it's been an absolute pleasure, brother. Holy smokes. We're going to have you on again. I want to know when you see the American flag and hear the national anthem, what do you think? And I'm going to, once again, I'm going to give you a second to think about it because I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. So when um, a few days ago, you've probably seen on social media, me and a real good friend of mine, we went to uh, the Sabres game and mm. uh, we were, because we're, we're both Marines, we were flipping toasted and uh, you know, we uh, had a national anthem and um it, it, we were playing the Canadians and um, they played the Canadian national anthem before. And it was, it was, it was kind of funny. I mean, you got to laugh about it when they were playing the Cana Canadian national anthem, people were like, you suck. <laughs> like it was, it, I mean, it was entertaining. It was funny to watch, but you know, I don't, I don't, I don't support, you know, uh, people bashing the, anybody's national anthem besides even ours. Right. Even though in the United States, you have a right to anyway. So, um, we stand for the national anthem. You know, every time I still hear national anthem, I snap to attention. It's just, uh, just a reaction. So um, we're sitting down, I turn to my buddy, and I say, dude, I, I just get the tummy tingles when, when I hear it. You know, the rocket's red glare and the bombs burst in an air. It's just something about it. it makes me just think about Iraq and, and kind of my the, all my friends I made. And, you know, no matter what, I can step away from somebody for, you know, for 10 years and, you know, catch up, like, like we're best friends again. Like we never missed a day. Um, and he's like, you're, you're right. And you got to look at it from another perspective. He's about 10 years older than me. So, you know, I, I completely love, love his wisdom. And he's like, you got to look at it from another perspective that when you internalize everything and, and that's what we did, we, we internalize America and the selflessness of being in the military and protecting the people that can't protect themselves. Um, we, it, it, it's, it's in our DNA. It's, it's like walking to us. Um, and that's why, that's why we get emotional when, when we hear it. And, and he was, he was exactly right. You know? So when you hear it and you hear the national anthem, I get the tummy tinks. Tell me what you get. I, I get it too. I get the goosebumps. Um, I, I go to a lot of baseball games, right? Me and my wife, that's our thing. That's what we do. I proposed cool. at a baseball game down nice. in Corpus, Corpus, go hooks. Uh, go hooks. Not, now I'm in Nashville. So, you know, go sounds. Oh, uh, yeah. They just, they were division champs this year, which is really cool. Cool. But, um, you know, uh, the Nashville sounds happen to have the highest, um, attendance in all of MILB. Okay. So, uh, they are, the, it's always packed no matter what day it is. We go on a lot of, we go a lot of Thursday, Saturday games, Thursday, Thursday, what's up. Um, but even when we go on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Mondays, doesn't matter. There's a ton of people there and Sundays, goodness gracious, absolutely packed with kids. And when, you know, you start to lose hope when you start looking around at this country. I know we just, you know, bitched and moaned about a lot of problems without proffering any solutions, I might add. Oh, ho, ho. Don't forget about that. But when I hear it and I start to sing it and I'm, I'm singing it maybe subdued because I don't want to, because, you know, I can get rowdy. I can get loud. But I sing it, I sing it subtly to myself. And I notice that it starts to catch and other people start being like, oh, I can sing too. And they start singing. And then the whole stadium is singing. I'm not saying it all came from me. I'm sure there was a couple other seeds that helped it mold. But when you hear a whole stadium singing, it like gives you that, it gives you hope. You're like, okay, it's not gone. It's not dead. We can still like that. The, the, the spark is there, bro. We just, need to, we just need to put fuel next to it to get the fire going. That's the truth. I, it, almost, it almost brings tears to my eyes to, to know that, you know, to hear it. Because it, it's, always, it's always good to hear, you know, it's, it, it just really is. But heck yeah holy smokes dude you're uh you're, you're a brilliant kid i love uh, i love talking to you always have you're, you're always been you're always been bright man um you got any final thoughts anything you learned from from the show today i would say thanks for uh letting me come on and bend your ear i know i might have like taken off in some directions that i'm because <laughs> that's how i go i that's how i find my way through the dark i just ramble but uh Amen. once again i totally appreciate the invitation and uh, i'm definitely coming on again for sure awesome all much right. to much to your viewers' dismay, I'm sure. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so they, if they put up with me, you're, you're a breath of fresh air. Trust me. <laughs>
<laughs> all right dude i appreciate you holy smokes this is a, this is one of the best shows that uh, I, I think that we've done um 11 days we're in day five of 11 uh saluting all veterans and and you know giving a different perspective of what people think you know we're not just uh um, we're not just that thank you to the vet um, and that uh, 10% military discount. We, uh, we have feelings, we have emotions. And, uh, Going to Applebee's, you know, getting that free plate, uh-huh. you know. Get, getting the free, the free fajita Friday and, you know, uh, it is what it is. But uh, all right, I'm going to have you on. I'm, I'm going to have you on the, to totally. the, the, the 1775 stream on November 10th. Absolutely. It's going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm all in, brother. I am all in. I can't thank you enough, brother, man. We'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. We're going to go to commercial. Who's getting the best of you? It's a question you have to ask yourself. It's not your family. It's not your loved ones. We're at work 10 to 14 hours a day. Who's getting the best of you? If you're watching this, you classify as one of three people. The type that is scared of Jesus of how much power our government has. Number two, you're the type that could probably use one or two extra incomes to your household, right? Or number three, you know tech is absolutely just blowing up. There's hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars just waiting to be monetized through YouTube monetization, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and you're kind of crazy if you're not poking at the bear and just trying to get some of the crumbs that are poking down, trickling down. One, two, four, 10,000 a month income. For what? All you're doing is posting things that you're passionate about. Posting things that you're passionate about over and over again. I say it all the time. Call today, reach out and talk to our specialists on how we can help you how we can help you open some of these doors for financial freedom and kind of get your life back. Not only get your life back, but start finding out who you really are and what's important to you. Start giving some of that time back to your friends and your family and start living your life. Start living your life for you and stop living your life for your job. Once again, come check us out, www.carbonmelon.com. That's www.carbonmelon.com, C-A-R-B-O-N-M-E-L-O-N.com. Come, check us out, make an appointment today, talk to one of our specialists. What do you have to lose? Free consultation. What do you have to lose? Get your life back. Back, thanks again for the show appreciate everybody appreciate you tyler everyone needs to get as much rest as we can tuesday 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 is going to be the big day when we're interviewing joe biden the president of the united states also tomorrow we have a william harding on um we have a little eric smith action from scranton pa um the same city that we shot The Office. Um, Lots of really great things happening. Lots of really great things. Keep tuning in. Keep subscribing. Keep liking, sharing, telling everyone as much as you can about everything that we have going on. And uh, keep making it happen. Thanks for being on our show. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for just being an American. We have lots lots to be proud, lots to be happy for. And let's keep making it happen. Love you guys. Take care.